As I walked through the hallways of the maximum security prison, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was being watched. I was here on assignment for my newspaper to conduct an exclusive interview with the infamous Red Mask, killer who'd been convicted of multiple murders over the past decade. His crimes were so heinous that even the most hardened criminals in the prison spoke of him with fear and reverence. The guard escorting me stopped at one of the cells and unlocked the door. He gave me a warning look before disappearing behind me, leaving me alone with the maniac within. The room was dimly lit, save for a single flickering fluorescent light bulb above his head. He sat on his cot, wearing nothing but a white jumpsuit stained with dried blood. But it wasn't until he turned to face me that I noticed something truly terrifying. His eyes gleamed not with humanity, but with pure malevolent hatred. They seemed to burn into my soul, making me feel like a mere insect beneath his gaze. He stood up slowly, revealing a hulking figure that towered over me by at least six inches. His muscular frame was adorned with intricate tattoos depicting grotesque demons and pentagrams. And then there was the mask, a crude fabrication made from red leather with two eye holes cut out, resembling the gaping maw of some eldritch abomination. It covered half of his face, leaving only his chin exposed, which twisted into a sinister grin. Well, well, he growled softly. Look what the cat dragged in. His voice was deep and gravelly, sending shivers down my spine. My instinctual response would have been to run away screaming, but I held fast against the urge to flee. I reminded myself that I was here for a reason, to learn more about the mind of a monster. As our conversation began, I quickly realized how little I knew about this enigmatic man. I asked him if he wanted to share any last words before we started recording, but instead of speaking, he reached into his pocket and pulled out a small cross carved from bone. With practiced ease, he unfolded it and placed it onto the ground in front of him. Suddenly. The air around us grew cold and still. Shadows danced along the walls, creating ghostly silhouettes that pulsed with an otherworldly energy. And just like that, everything went dark. When the lights flickered back on, the cell block was flooded with the sound of chanting voices, their language foreign yet somehow familiar. And then I saw them. At first, they appeared like wisps of smoke emerging from every crack and cranny. But soon enough, solid forms took shape, each more hideous than the next. Some were vaguely humanoid with glowing eyes, while others looked like giant snakes writhing in agony. They congregated around my subject, bowing low, as if paying homage to a king. It was clear that these entities were not mere figments of imagination. They existed and they worshiped him as their new master, but why? What could possibly justify such malefic devotion? He merely smiled knowingly and whispered five cryptic words under his breath. Praise be to our Dark Lord. As the minutes ticked by, I found myself becoming increasingly uneasy. Not because of the supernatural manifestations, although those certainly didn't help matters either. No, it was the fact that despite his confessions of murder and blasphemy, part of me couldn't bring myself to hate him completely. There was something innately charismatic about him that belied his horrible actions 
and I feared I might be falling prey to the same temptations that led countless victims astray. But just as quickly as the possessed horde materialized, they vanished without explanation, leaving only silence once again. He leaned forward, as though sharing a secret meant for no one else's ears. You see, he began with a wry smirk. There are forces beyond your understanding at play here. What are you talking about? I interjected skeptically. Oh, come now, he retorted with amusement. Don't pretend to be naive. You came seeking answers, but deep down you already suspect the truth. Something stirring inside your gut, trying to warn you of the darkness closing in around us. The red mask's laughter echoed through the otherwise silent block, causing my skin to crawl. I tried to steel myself, determined not to let my emotions control the situation, but something about his taunting attitude set off alarm bells. I decided it was time to change course and ask about the mysterious forces he mentioned earlier. I cleared my throat and said, if I may ask, what exactly do you mean when you say forces? Are you suggesting that there is someone or something influencing your actions? The red mask leaned back on his cot, studying me intently. After several moments of deliberate consideration, he replied, Ah, oh, I can tell you're not easily swayed. Your curiosity does you credit, young journalist, very well. Allow me to elaborate further. Before continuing, the Red Mask retrieved a well-worn book from underneath his pillow. Its cover was embossed with arcane symbols that seemed to pulse with a dark energy. Without hesitation, he opened it to a specific page and handed it to me. As I examined its contents, I felt an almost physical shockwave travel throughout my body. This wasn't just any old textbook on occult studies. The pages contained detailed instructions for summoning ancient gods, invoking infernal curses, and communing with forbidden dimensions beyond mortal comprehension. And worse yet, many of the incantations bore an eerie similarity to recent events reported in nearby towns. These included reports of sudden weather disturbances, strange creature sightings, missing persons cases, and outbreaks of mass psychosis among local populations, all leading to a common denominator. Each incident occurred near locations where previous killings attributed to the Red Mask took place. With mounting horror, the pieces clicked together in my mind. This murderer wasn't acting independently. Rather, he played a role in something much larger and infinitely more dangerous than anyone suspected. A grand plan orchestrated by unfathomable entities looking just outside our perception, manipulating events with an end game nobody dared consider. My heart racing, I stammered. Are you telling me that you're not just a killer, but a pawn in a greater scheme? That there are dark forces using you as a vessel for their malevolence? The red mask nodded, a glimmer of satisfaction in his eyes. Precisely. I am but a tool, an instrument of their will. They have chosen me as their harbinger, their agent of chaos in this mortal realm. Through me, they seek to sow discord, fear, and ultimately pave the way for their return. My mind raced, trying to comprehend the implications of his words. This wasn't just a story of a deranged killer. It was a battle between good and evil with the fate of humanity hanging in the balance. I knew I had stumbled upon something immense. 
something that could change everything if I could unravel its secrets. Summoning all my courage, I pressed on, determined to learn more. Tell me, I implored, how did you become entwined with these entities? What drew their attention to you? A somber expression crossed the red mask's face, momentarily dispelling the air of arrogance that surrounded him. I was but a lost soul, he began, his voice tinged with a mix of regret and resignation. Consumed by darkness, despair, and the very worst aspects of humanity, they sensed the void within me, the perfect vessel for their wicked desires. They whispered promises of power, vengeance, and liberation from the shackles of morality. And I, weak and broken, succumbed to their seduction. His confession chilled me to the core. The notion that someone could be so easily manipulated by these eldritch forces struck a chord of unease within me. But there was still one question burning in my mind. What is their endgame? What do they seek to achieve through all this suffering and destruction? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. A sinister smile crept across the red mask's face, as if he relished revealing the terrible truth. Their end game, he declared, is nothing short of ushering in an era of darkness, a world steeped in chaos where their influence reigns supreme and mortal souls are but playthings for their malevolent whims. They crave worship, devotion, and the fear that comes with it, and the fear that comes with it, and they will stop at nothing until they achieve their unholy dominion. A chill ran down my spine as I contemplated the magnitude of what he had just revealed. The Red Mask wasn't just a deranged killer but a key player in a diabolical plot to unleash ancient, incomprehensible horrors upon the world. As I left the prison that day, my mind raced with the weight of the knowledge I had gained. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that unseen eyes followed my every move. I knew I had stumbled upon a secret that put my life in grave danger. But I also knew that I couldn't turn away. Armed with the knowledge of the Red Mask's true nature and the forces that manipulated him, I vowed to expose the darkness lurking beneath the surface. I would dig deeper and cover the ancient texts and find a way to thwart their plans. Humanity's fate depended on it. Little did I know the horrors that awaited me on this treacherous path. The shadows grew deeper, the whispers more sinister, and the lines between reality and nightmare blurred. I faced countless obstacles, encounters with otherworldly beings, and battles against the very essence of evil. But I persevered. I ventured into forbidden places, sought the wisdom of those who had delved into the occult, and pieced together fragments of ancient lore. Every step brought me closer to the truth, closer to unraveling the dark tapestry woven by the Red Mask and his eldritch masters. In the end, it was a race against time. The forces of darkness were gathering, their power growing with every passing day. I had to act swiftly, for the fate of humanity hung in the balance. With a heavy heart and trembling hands, I made my move. Armed with sacred relics, incantations, and the knowledge I had acquired, I confronted the Red Mask in a final cataclysmic showdown. The battle that ensued was beyond comprehension, 
A clash of mortal and otherworldly forces that shook the very foundations of existence. In the end, it was a sacrifice that brought victory. Through a desperate act of selflessness, I managed to sever the bond between the Red Mask and his eldritch masters, banishing them back to the depths from whence they came. The cost was high, for I would forever bear the scars of that encounter, both physical and emotional. As I emerged from the prison, bloodied but triumphant, I knew that the world would never be the same. The Red Mask had been stopped, the dark forces that manipulated him vanquished, but the knowledge of their existence remained. It was a burden I would carry with me for the rest of my days, a constant reminder that evil lurks in the shadows, always seeking a way back into our world. And so I vowed to use my newfound understanding to protect the innocent, to shine a light on the darkness that threatens to engulf us. The story of the Red Mask would be my legacy, a cautionary tale of the dangers that lie hidden beneath the surface. For in this world of shadows and secrets, knowledge is the greatest weapon we have against the encroaching darkness. For just $3 a month, you can have your name featured in my YouTube videos and descriptions. Not only will you be supporting my channel, but you'll also be immortalized in the credits of my content. If you're looking for something a bit more personalized, consider becoming a $25 a month patron. I'll voice your stories and bring them to life on my channel. Create a special drawing just for you, or even write a unique story tailored to your interests. So don't hesitate. Join my patron community today and help me keep the spooky stories coming. And remember, together we can save each other from the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support.